Hi everyone. First time I record the video uh, this way. Uh, really glad to be able to present. Uh, and sorry, I cannot be there in person. My name is Nathan Shama. I am CTO at Tinder Fund, and I'm really excited to uh, present the work we've been doing toward nurturing a quantum open source ecosystem at Uter Farm. So let me give you an outline of this talk. Uh, of course, I'll try to uh, uh, give a spotlight to Julia and Julia projects uh, as much as possible. Uh, I will start by telling you what we do at Uter Farm, uh, our scope, which encompasses Julia projects and has a lot of overlaps, but is also uh, including uh, projects uh, and activities in other languages or there that are not uh, only in open source software. I will speak about the microgrant program. That is the, the way actually Utah Fund activity started and it's actually the, the main program that we have to support new projects in the community. I will give an example of a well-established project who is now exploring Julia and then give more information about our meetings, uh, our surveys, uh, what we see in Open Harbor in quantum technology, our special kind of hackathons that support also Julia projects. And uh, finally, I will speak about two um, open source projects that we develop in-house with our Utah Fun team and a global community, of course. They are metric, a platform to benchmark quantum computing resources, and Mythic, which is a Python toolkit uh, uh, to mitigate uh, errors coming from quantum computations. So, first of all, well, in this setting, I don't need to um, make the case for it, but uh, it's always a nice reminder uh, that uh, open source software needs some sort of support. Uh, it comes in various forms. We know where like companies, corporates, research institutions, but also targeted institutional support for open source software is crucial. And these three projects, which have a, a tremendous impact uh, to the scientific community and beyond, have some kind of institutional organizations that uh, help uh, uh, their um, growth and maintenance. So what Utah Fund aims to do is, uh, um, in, in a broader sense, the vision is to have a quantum computing and quantum technology ecosystem that helps the most people. And our mission finds uh, that supporting open source software at this point where there is so much software to build, so much communities to grow, it's one of the most effective ways of doing so. We do three main things to which I uh, gave some hints of uh, previously. One is the microgrant program, which I will uh, tell you about. Uh, we've funded, uh, with no strings attached, uh, over 100 teams in 31 countries. I will give more details about that. Secondly, I spoke about the technical staff, which I lead, and this is mostly the research we do in-house with and for open source projects. Um, and finally, there are um, a broad range of community activities uh, that we do with a global community of uh, hobbyists, researchers, uh, students, and uh, software developers uh, alike. So this is the Utah Fund team. Um, and I would really like to acknowledge all the folks on the team. Purva Pakre, who's uh, our quantum open source fellow, as well as alumni that have now uh, moved to uh, other institutions. So this is our technical staff. And all of these folks uh, uh, are involved uh, 
in some of our open source projects and in some cases they're themselves maintainers and creators of some tools that are used by the community. This is our uh, board of directors, which I'm glad to be part of, together with uh, experts coming from the world of technology, uh, investments, uh, software development, uh, research-focused organizations. And all we do uh, is uh, thanks to the support we get as a non-profit organization, to do so, we have uh, an annual program uh, to fund our ecosystem activities and sponsored research. This year, uh, core and supporting members, it's two tiers, uh, can be found on this slide. There are IBM Quantum, Scientifica Venture Capital, and Quantum Italia, uh, Dora Hacks, Microsoft Pascal, IONQ, AWS, Sandbox AQ, and QCWare. And we have many more supporters that have supported us through the years, also as part of a member program or other programs that you see um, listed on, on the right. And I would also like to uh, mention institutional supporters, which are the funding agencies, such as the U.S. Department of Energy, the National Science Foundation, or the Welcome Leap uh, that fund part of the research and the country transfer that we perform in-house with collaborators at Hyundai Farm. So, speaking about the microgrants, uh, they're small grants, but they have a big impact. We've awarded to date uh, grants uh, in more than 31 countries, 100 projects, actually, exactly 31 countries, 100 projects uh, uh, that have led to many publications, a lot of code. Uh, uh, so you can also find like GitHub metrics such as stars and forks. And uh, this is everything that is a misfit for things that go from a venture fund startup uh, and academic research uh, that fits in papers. Everything in between is a good fit. And it's very easy to apply. And it just takes five minutes uh, with a video online application. So when you look at the kind of impact, which I will uh, uh, spend some time on, that has been obtained with, with this program, it is really impressive to see that it's been funded roughly with something just of the order of what would be like two fully funded PhD studentships in a US uh, uh, university. It is like the cost for a university to fund two full-time students. And in some cases, I'm showing here this uh, quote, um, we've seen sort of like network effects and I will give some other examples, but one of the first grants was given to a collective of researchers in Armenia, who uh, then, uh, which would then, this project, KID42, was uh, instrumental to start the national program in that country, in quantum technologies and quantum computing. So what kind of projects we funded? So actually I'm using here three examples that uh, have to do with Julia. So we would say like 4% of, of grants now given to Julia projects, which is not much. We get to more uh, metrics later on. Uh, definitely this space uh, in software is dominated by Python at this point in quantum. Uh, so, um, one of these projects is Marta CT, which is actually a, a software package for medical diagnostics that uses quantum tomography inspired techniques for state reconstruction in order to reduce the radiation those patients receive. Uh, members Yao.jl, and specifically a part of Yao that was already established uh, as a group and software, which was a domain specific language uh, uh, compiler development. I will spend some words on this. And then we gave uh, two grants. One was a follow-up grant uh, to Piccolo.jl, which is a quantum optimal control package uh, in, in Julia uh, based on, on a method called Pate Integrator Collocation. And so talking about network effects, the Yao.jl grant 
was actually a project uh, inspired uh, by another project uh, in Python called PyZX uh, that actually applies ZX Catalyst to um, use its diagrammatic techniques uh, uh, to simplify the compilation of quantum circuits and automate that. And so the inspiration of the Yao.jl folks by PyZX uh, led to this Yao-Lang domain-specific language, uh, which was uh, part of uh, the funded uh, activities by Unitary Fund. And this kind of network effect is something that we see doing and we're involved in doing more and more at Unitary Fund. You see here from the paneling page, many integration and plugins they have. And one that has just been added this week is the Crack GPU Accelerated Simulator uh, developed by Unitary Fund as a, as a possible backend of Penile and also integrated with the Catalyst uh, uh, project, uh, which is part of Penile as a uh, just-in-time MLIR uh, system. We also support talent working on several projects. So I'm really glad to announce that this week, uh, uh, the joining of Urban Thacker to, uh, as part of the Unitary Fund team actually doesn't feel like uh, uh, welcoming Urva as a new member because she's been collaborating with our community and our team for so long. So here you see just some examples of things and, and projects where um, Urva has, has helped as a volunteer contributor to Mythic over the years, uh, helping develop uh, benchmarks or poly twirling uh, capabilities in this error mitigation package. Uh, then as a Google Summer of Code uh, student uh, supported by Numfocus working on the Q-tip quantum information processing package to develop a, a technique to and, and method to generalize uh, unitaries and compile them in specific native gates. She's been then a Unitary Fund ambassador. She worked, funded by Unitary Fund on a micro grant to work on Tokito, which is a project uh, developed mainly by Vincent Russo that helps with uh, non local games uh, and quantum information. And most recently, she is now a quantum open source fellow, funded thanks to funding from the National Science Foundation. As part of our community activities, uh, I would say the center of these activities is the Unitary Fund Discord server. Uh, we have many projects that hold their uh, community calls and office hours on them. You can see here a selection. One of them is Pico.jl itself. And you can also see here on the, on the right uh, an example of a Quantum Wednesday talk uh, that we're hosting. Uh, uh, regularly, almost every Wednesday, so you can find more of the, the QR code. In terms of projects that we support, uh, one that I would like to mention because of its impact and my direct involvement is QTIP, the quantum toolbox in Python. So it's a great toolbox to simulate noise. In general, cavity QED systems, uh, it has a collection of uh, uh, dynamical solvers uh, uh, using various techniques uh, from uh, um, Monte Carlo solvers uh, with trajectory uh, approaches to master equations, non-Markovian uh, effects, uh, and you can see here also nice uh, usage of uh, uh, tools, for example, for block sphere representation of qubit evolution, as well as tomography, thanks to uh, the Wigner function, which is also the Schrodinger cat is actually the symbol of a Q-tip uh, project itself, and myself have been involved in developing permutational symmetric uh, uh, modules uh, uh, to help uh, characterize not just single qubits in a cavity, but a variety of qubits and spin interacting together in a dissipative way as well as coherent. So looking at emerging uh, systems and behaviors that could happen there. So talking about QTIP and the support of Unitary Fund has given, uh, together with being involved in other projects and programs we do, we helped establish uh, the governance for the project, which was started at Riken in Frank Honoris Group, but actually was getting help uh, from researchers 
and contributors worldwide as well as uh, other professors. So we have sent a charter, set up an admin team with regular meetings and a board, and also um, give annual reports. And recently, we had the second Qt developers workshop at Trikim in March 2024. The first one had just about five to six people. This one had around 30 people joining. And this project has over 1 million downloads, so the impact of research is really cumbersome. It's great. So how does the quantum toolbox in Python get entangled with Julia? Well, um, recently we started hosting on the Qtip uh, uh, organization the quantumtoolbox.jl project developed by Alberto Mercurio, uh, Luca Gravina, and Yi uh, Te Wang. Um, there are also some other uh, quantum optics uh, uh, simulators in Julia. What the quantum toolbox in Julia does is um, exactly be as similar as possible to Qtip. So if you come from Python, you're going to uh, use it very similarly. Here's an example with Abisol, the fam famous master question solver in Qtip. You see the syntax is basically ident identical in, in Julia. Plus, you get that it's so easy to integrate, for example, with GPU and uh, CUDA resources. And also, you'll notice uh, I'm happy to have inspired the, the logo with uh, the three uh, uh, cat uh, code, uh, Schrodinger code uh, interference fringes uh, in, the, um, in the tomography of the finger function inspired by Julia. So I spoke about, here at, we are at, at JuliaCon. Uh, we also started hosting our unitary con events. Um, the first one was uh, in Rome last year. The next one will be in September at Alto University in Finland. And it's like a great event uh, to bring together the uh, um, growing developers uh, community in quantum technologies. Last year, the headline sponsor was Quantum Italia. So in Italia Fund, we also run um, a survey. You can find the results online on our blog. Um, and this is really great the resource to start tracking uh, now also with the historical data. Uh, what are the most popular services and tools uh, by and, and for uh, the quantum software developers? So here you see, for example, the popularity of cloud service providers in quantum. And I also think it's interesting to have a look at what programming languages uh, responders use in developing quantum software. So you see here a predominance of Python, which is pretty stable, uh, and decrease of C++, Mathematica, and a clear growth of Rust and Julia. Uh, Julia currently up 14%. You can delve more, more into the results of the last survey, and you will also find out that Julia fares very high in terms of uh, uh, what sort, uh, uh, what languages folks would like to pick up as new as new programming language? And there's many filters that you can dynamically apply to see what are the responses replies for researchers, for students, for people working at startups or enterprises. And here again, this is like the aggregated data for all respondents. You see that Rust and Julia, about a third of folks would like to pick them up. Uh, as, uh, as new tools. I briefly mentioned open hardware, and here let me give a bit more details. What's open hardware in quantum technology? What is the counterpart of classical electronics, uh, such as Arduino and Raspberry Pi in quantum? We actually wrote uh, um, a review reporting on uh, the first projects uh, that are active in this space, you can find published in APL Quantum, the first issue. And by open hardware, we mean, as uh, highlighted by this graph, everything that is between uh, you know, the, the device uh, prototyping and, for example, tools such as PyAPR, 
or the mask design of uh, superconducting circuits with K2 circuits uh, based on K layout uh, uh, programs to the open access to facilities such as foundries for fabrication uh, to whatever software is involved, such as KIC, uh, in sustained operation, testing and characterization of devices. So for example, the KIC project, the quantum instrumentation control kit, is uh, both software and uh, system on a chip uh, with fast uh, controls enabled by FPGAs, that you can see shown here. And you can tell more about uh, uh, information about how these projects uh, um, are scattered through different and uh, spread through the different verticals. You can also find some projects that have to do with specific uh, um, capabilities. And one of them, blockade.jl, is in Julia. Uh, it stands out, and I'm sure there's also some other projects uh, in Julia too, such as uh, the painter qubits devices.jl. So this is like a summary slide of the kind of activities uh, at Unitary Fund we do supporting open quantum hardware. We also give grants to open quantum hardware projects. Uh, we support some of them at, in our hackathon, which I will speak about. King hosts its community calls weekly on our Discord, and we are partners of the Open Quantum Design uh, uh, Program and Foundation at University of uh, Center of Waterloo. So what's Unity Hack? It's a great program that helps supporting existing projects uh, in uh, quantum technology that are open source. Here you can see some uh, screenshots uh, about two projects uh, that got uh, bounties up uh, for grabs, asking help from the community to solve them. And these bounties are nothing else than issues. If you click on them, our automated uh, APIs will take you to the open issue uh, that is on, on GitHub. It's great for maintainers, it's great for newcomers, it's great for folks who want to help out. It's a fourth year we run the program, and this year we had our largest uh, event yet, 800 participants, over 50 projects, uh, and actually this slide is not updated, it's, it's more than 70 uh, bounty hackers were, were involved, more than 65, uh, for sure, bounty hackers were involved. So, and they claimed up to 10K in bounties. This year, we also had in-person meetings in uh, Mexico, in Finland, and in the US. And this is another example of a project that got some issues solved thanks to the project itself. So this one, a great thing of this program, um, and this event, uh, sometimes in hackathons, the problems are not so relevant. These problems are, are thorny issues that maintainers would like to have for the community. We also have like a gamification part of it. So there is a hackathon leaderboard and you can see folks uh, actually like this user, Golanor, uh, supporting uh, uh, different projects. So this is great because they have many projects in the space. Uh, and. Uh, we also have some Julia pro projects such, such as Bracket Simulator.jl, Pickle.jl, and Bracket.jl this year participating. And this is a great way to have new to help newcomers get into quantum. So this is a, an example of a developer who is an open source software freelancer who first got into quantum thanks to Unitary Hack, actually was in the top three performers in their bounties. He then got uh, a micro grant to develop its own uh, project, Classic, ClassKit, a Python to quantum compiler. And this year, ClassKit got some community help uh, by participating as a part of the team they had in So now, before switching to. Uh, yeah, we're running out of time. Uh, this will be online. Uh, later, so uh, we still have uh, the talk. Still have five minutes, so I'll stop here. And uh, if you have questions regarding uh, the previous part of the talk, uh, feel free to ask me after the session. Um, and we'll have the next.
talk.